So I walked into my office one morning, and I opened up my laptop, and there was an email from Bhutan. Does everybody know where Bhutan is? This was an email from the Prime Minister of Bhutan inviting me to come to the United Nations and lead, facilitate a working group of NGOs, non-governmental people at the grassroots from all over the world to help Bhutan launch the Gross National Happiness Index into the, into the world at the United Nations. How do we measure human progress? We measure it with something called GDP, gross domestic product. And what that measures is how much profit we make in the exchange of goods and services. And what's missing? What's missing? What's missing are environmental impacts, social impacts. Those are missing. So I got a big insight. That's why I'm here from that meeting at the United Nations. I said, oh my gosh, what if, what if we actually took on the global economic paradigm that we've been living with for a long time, and I'll tell you the story about that, that we've been living with for a long time and tried, tried actually to have a revolution to reform that global economic paradigm. And here was a good beginning to measure human development differently. So I wanted to find out how we got where we are. And what I found out was that 70 years ago, in 1944, as World War II was ending, and Europe was on its knees, 730 delegates gathered, to, gathered at a place called Bretton Woods, New Hampshire. I had not heard about this before to hammer out a post-war economy so that Europe could recover and so that the world could have an economy that would work for everybody. This was 70 years ago. And they, they debated and they negotiated and they discussed for over a month these 730 men. I didn't put a slide up <laughs> because you would have seen what was missing from Bretton Woods in 1944. <laughs> What they, what they gave us was the most powerful economy in the world. But what was missing was an economy that was equitable, that was sustainable, that was fair, and most of all, that was compassionate. And here we are 70 years later, and we still have the structures that were developed at Bretton Woods. The IMF, the Inter International Monetary Fund, the World Bank, and GDP, gross domestic product. So here it is 70 years later. So my big insight, I'm not an economist, but that big insight gave me a big idea. Our organization, the Center for Emergent Diplomacy, based in New Mexico, is looking at a way of doing diplomacy differently. But this gave me the insight that this was, a, this was an even bigger systemic intervention at the whole systems level if we could transform the global economy. And, if, and how could we do that? How could we do that? Because what we have now is broken and not working. We have an endless war economy, and we have an economy that is not working for everybody in the world. And for a lot of us right here at right here at home. Psychologist Dorothy Stoneman said, wrote recently, and I looked at this carefully, she said, at this moment in time, and you're the audience for this because you are all leaders out there, everybody in this room is privileged to be able to lead. What she, what she wrote was, this is that moment in time when there is an imperative, when there is an imperative for leaders to step forward with the biggest, most far-reaching, deepest goals to help make the world a better place. 
And our success will be limited to the extent to which we only choose partial goals. I loved this because what she was saying that, is that we have the ability and the technology now. We have the ability and the technology to go to the whole system, and we're all capable of that. Lots of TEDx people talk about crowdsourcing, and I want to say that too. I want to say that too. The Bhutanese need help. Gross National Happiness needs help. We all need to pull together. We need to pull together all these different movements that are happening all over the world. What Dorothy Stoneman would call those partial goals that are so important and bring them together under an umbrella I'm calling Bretton Woods 3.0. <laughs> I'm not calling it 2.0 because Richard Nixon took us off the gold standard. I think it was the mid-70s, and that was a biggie, changed everything. So let's call it Bretton Wood 3.0. And this is an opportunity for us to come together to do this and to pull in the environmental movement, the movement to end violence against women, the movements to educate girls and kids in math and science so they can build a more peaceful world those movements for a living wage, those campaigns that are going to stop us from going into Syria next week. Let's pull them all, let's pull them all under an umbrella of looking at this global economic system that's broken and that we have to change. Here in New Mexico, mining interests are coming back for uranium mining. And that's just one small example, and I mention that because we're all here and we live here. And that's an example. That's an example of the old, that's the example of the old economic paradigm. Because the GDP goes up when we mine for uranium. When we stop that from happening, the GDP doesn't go up. And how do you measure social change? How do you monetize it? And how do you put a price on it? So I am here with my idea that I want to share, which is I hope all of you will join me. All of you will join me at Bretton Woods 3.0. And let's trade, let's trade power and unlimited growth. Let's trade that for sustainability, for compassion, and for happiness. I'll see you all at Bretton Woods 3.0.